This video is sponsored by Guardio, a premium browser extension available for Chrome and Microsoft Edge. Guardio protects users as they browse online and offers identity monitoring available on any device. Learn more about my thoughts on Guardio in a few moments. Recent security attacks on MFA or multi-factor authentication have the security industry rethinking the effectiveness of MFA. Recent security headlines have highlighted how MFA still isn't effective against phishing and social engineering attacks. Of course, the human weakness, something that we'll always, I think, be dealing with. So in today's demo, I will be overviewing how easy it is to fish a user into handing over their username, password, and MFA code, which then can be used in a replay attack. I will then overview MFA push notification fatigue using a really super dumb Python script that is script kitty like. Evil Jinx 2, or however you say that, is a man-in-the-middle attack framework used for phishing login credentials along with session cookies, which then can be used to bypass two-factor or MFA codes. Evil Jinx 2 is very similar to Evil Proxy, a tool being sold in the dark web, which has recently been in the security news due to its ease of use for script kiddies like myself. Evil Jinx 2 functions as a reverse proxy sitting in the middle between the victim and real authentication service such as Microsoft 365. When a user requests to log into a website, the reverse proxy will act as the intermediary, sending and replaying with legitimate requests to the user and authentication service. In this way, the reverse proxy is functioning as the classic man in the middle attack. To simulate this attack, I created a free tier Amazon EC2 instance, basically a virtual machine, and installed the necessary dependencies to run on Evil Jinx 2 written in the Go programming language. I follow the steps outlined in this blog here, which included replacing the Office 365 login template with an updated version to steal the authentication or session cookie. I use Freenom, a free, sketchy, slow loading domain registrar that provides free FQDN or fully qualified domain names, and so then I use the .tk domain. Of course, a real attacker would probably impersonate the actual domain, so they would, you know, register a .com address. I entered the public IP address of my EC2 instance into each of my uh, DNS A records. Back to my EC2 instance, I set my domain and IP address of the hosted server, which will then generate a Let's Encrypt cert on the fly, which is pretty cool. And then after all of this, all you need to do is enable the Office 365 login form fishlet, and a custom link will generate, which then can be used to send to the person, maybe through you know a voicemail, a text, I don't, I don't really know. Okay, so here in front of me, I have a simple EC2 instance up and running with evil nginx or whatever it's called and i have a malicious link that i have generated here if i go ahead and copy this link then this could be embedded in some sort of phishing email you know the standard ways to deliver some malicious link whatever that is um, let's say we trick the user into believing that they will enter in their password and in this case it is going to be impersonating uh, microsoft office suite it will redirect us to the Microsoft portal. Uh, so it's just doing basically what we would think it is. But if you can see, of course, we have our little Dibuda uh, domain up there. So let's log in. For this demonstration, I am using an old student account. So I'm going to blur this out. There's nothing really valuable on that. But just in case, I actually had to have a real O365 account. And as my second form of authentication, uh, you can go ahead and use SMS text. It's not very good, but that is MFA. And as you can see here, I am fully into my office suite and I can do whatever the heck I want to do. All right, so going back to my evil Nginx, you're going to see a few things. One is my username and uh, my password. And if we type in sessions, you're going to see a token that has been captured. Uh, I've already done this a few times just to test before making this video. So if I go ahead and do sessions three, which is, or four, which is the latest one, I have my authentication cookie populated here. All I need to do then is copy this and we are presented with the login a prompt, Google Chrome, and I have installed a little cookie extension which allows me to supply my authentication cookie. So I'm gonna go up here, go to cookie editor, oops, click import and paste that authentication cookie I received from the phishing kit into here, import, 
refresh this screen here and boom we are in to my account and it's really that easy it basically anyone could do this it took me just a few minutes to set this up so how did this phishing attack work well through the browser browsers are the gateway to the internet for the most of us they play a key role in our lives storing the most valuable information from messages banking wallet information passwords addresses and much more in order to protect this valuable information we need a solution such as Guardio. Guardio detects threats before they can reach your browser and cause harm. So in this case, Guardio could detect malicious or evil phishing websites before entering your credentials. Installing Guardio is easy, no need to install another piece of software on your computer. All you need to do is go to the browser app store on Chrome or Microsoft Edge and install the browser extension. You can scan your browser for threats for free by visiting the link here or in the description below. By installing the extension using that link, you will get a 7-day free trial to the premium features such as real-time threat removal. Removal. If you sign up through your phone, you can get a free email scan to detect existing leaks or get real-time notifications once new leaks occur so that you can take action immediately. Thanks to Guardio for sponsoring today's video and on to MFA push notification fatigue. What better way to be authenticated than be constantly annoyed with push notification fatigue? Security through annoyance. For this attack, I assumed I had a username, password already, but I was stuck with the MFA push notification prompt. I set up my demo environment with a burner LastPass account, which allows Cisco Duo push notifications sent to a phone. I used the trial version of Cisco Duo to simulate a business environment and enable push notifications on my phone. Now in this case, I did cheat. I downloaded LastPass Python library from my machine and wrote the dumbest, most script kitty kip with the never ending while wow loop. And here's what I came up with. So basically <laughs> what this will do is it will spam this LastPass login here with duo pushes until you literally are just fatigued. So let's try this here. And about every 20 seconds, you're going to see, and you get the point. It's just a duo push. About every 20 seconds, you're going to get this push notification. And well, that's just the simple uh, push notification fatigue attack. There really isn't many solutions in terms of protecting against reverse proxy phishing. Maybe one short-term solution is to client-side TLS fingerprinting. And this can help be used to identify and filter man in the middle requests. This is accomplished through TLS fingerprinting using client-based fields such as the client hello message during a TLS handshake to authenticate the client and filter out man in the middle requests. The FIDO2 hardware keys or software keys can either be embedded directly on user phones or laptops, or they can be used through external hardware tokens, such as on a USB device, Bluetooth dongle, or NFC dongle. FIDO2 would eliminate the need for knowledge-based or one-time password authentication because it relies on public key cryptography. In combination with the WebAuthn standard, an API which integrates the FIDO2 standard, Hardware and software keys can be used to completely uh, transform the traditional form of authentication. By using cryptographic keys and challenges to verify the legitimacy of a server request, such as a request to log in or to authenticate, the attacker cannot impersonate a website or service. The website or service has specific cryptographic keys linked to the service. So a phishing website won't have the necessary key for a user to authenticate into its service because the user has never registered a public private key with the website. If you want to learn more information, this is called password list, by the way, you can go to my video on the future of passwords. Right now, I think the best way to combat MFA is going to be through a combination of using FIDO2 keys and... Um, yeah, I mean, there really isn't much else you can do. Uh, but hopefully in today's video, you've learned something new. And yep, until the next one, have a good day.